Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. In this episode, we'll be looking at how to create ourselves a nice little countdown little clock here. You can use it for the start of your events or services or a countdown to when you go live on your stream on Twitch or really whatever you want to count down for. We're just showing you the different techniques you can use and a couple different things that you could do to spice up your countdown video. But for now, let's jump in right on in into After Effects. We've got a brand new project here and we're going to create a new composition. For this one, we'll do 1920 by 1080. And our duration is going to be however long you want your countdown to be. So we'll just do one for one minute. So we'll hit OK and we've created our composition. Next, we'll go to Layer New Solid and we'll create that there. And we're going to call this our Text Time. We'll hit OK and drop it in there. Then we're going to go to Effects. We'll go down to the bottom and we're going to go Effects Text Numbers. It'll give us a little pop up and this is where we can choose what our font will be for our actual countdown text. For me, I'm going to go for something that's pretty sans serif and something clear to see. You see, we've got a number of options here, but we're going to go for Nova Cento Wide. And we'll go for uh, Medium. We'll hit OK, and you see here, my numbers have appeared. Now, it's not exactly showing exactly what I want. So, on the left-hand side, we're going to go to the Effects Controls, or wherever your Effects Controls are. And we'll go to the Type, under Format, and select time code. Now you want to pick time code for whichever time code you are using. If you're unsure, you can always go to composition up the top, composition settings, and it is listed here as your frame rate. So 25, or if you're doing it at 30, etc., etc. But you want to be using one of the ones that it gives you the option for. So 25 if you're doing it in power, 30 for NTSC, or 24 if you're doing it for film. So there we go, we've got our numbers all set up there, but we want to make it a little bit bigger. So we'll go down to the size and we'll scale it up. And we can click on the center right near the right and drag it around so we can actually see. So if we drag our playhead through, you'll see it actually counts and it's counting the actual time that this playhead is up to. Which is great because it goes all the way up to 1 minute or 59 seconds, 24 frames for me. But you'll see it's wobbling all around, and that's because the text size is changing as we go through different numbers. So we want to go over to our effects controls, and we want to unclick this thing called proportional spacing. We'll click that, and you'll see it all bunches together. Not exactly what we want to have happen, so we'll go to the tracking underneath the size, and we'll just push it out a little bit like so. Now as we scroll through, you can see all the numbers come up, but they're not clashing with anything, and it's not all wobbling around. Now, for me, I just want this section in here, because I'm only doing up to a minute, so I'm really just counting down the seconds. If you're counting longer than a minute, maybe two, maybe five or ten, then you'd want to include the minutes as well as the seconds. Um, now, I don't generally put frame rate in. If you want to put the frames as well to make it look even more dramatic, it's entirely up to you. But I'm going to change the fill color, and the fill color just changes the color of our text. You can see there by toggling transparency, it's a lot easier to see. And for me, I'm just going to scale up the size quite large and just position it over where those seconds are. Maybe I'll go a bit bigger and like so. So there we go. And you can see I've positioned it in a way that gets rid of the rest. You could also mask that out if you so wish. So you can see there it counts from 59 to 0. That's great. That's exactly what I want. But it's going in the wrong direction. So how do we rectify that? Well, we're going to right click on our layer. And we're going to click this one here, pre-compose. So we click pre-compose. We're going to move all attributes into the new composition. And we're going to call this the text time comp. We'll hit OK. You'll see our effects have disappeared because it's all inside this composition now. This composition is merely the result of everything that we've just done. So on our source layer, uh, in our layer uh, that we just created, we're going to right click. And we're going to go to time and we're actually going to reverse the time. So we're going to hit time reverse layer like so. And there we go. We got 59 seconds at the start. We'll scroll through and we got zero at the end. So it's doing exactly what we want it to do, which is count down. We can create a new solid and put it behind. We can pick a color even. 
and find a nice color to sit behind and we'll hit OK. And there we have it. We can even do effects directly onto this comp which has our text. Say so put a drop shadow on it and that will give us some cool controls over what we can do with our countdown. Now you remember most countdowns they kind of have this cool spinning thing around it so if we scale down our comp we can create a new solid again. We'll make this one white because our text is white and we're just going to go up to the top and select the ellipse tool. Now clicking in the middle we'll hold alt and shift no control and shift there we go and create a circle around our numbers now for this one I want it to be the edge so I'm going to go to effect generate stroke and I'm going to select on transparent and I can thicken up the brush size a bit so you can see there I've got this around my thing now I'm going to duplicate that layer and select the bottom one and delete the stroke again and I'm going to go to effect uh, transition and then radial wipe and swap it to counterclockwise in the wipe settings and you'll see here as I drag the transition completion it kind of does this pie shape going from uh, empty to complete so what I can do is go to transition completed 100% and click the stopwatch and then go to the end of my composition and drag that number all the way to zero so you can see it goes from 100 all the way or it counts fills in as the countdown goes I'm going to select both these layers and drag it underneath my text and then I will select the one which has the radial wipe I'm going to go to mode and change it to overlay so now it's it's there but it's not too intense and not washing out where my actual numbers are which is pretty cool so that's one way that you can do it where you have a pie chart sort of thing filling it all in and we can even grab a image so in this case I have my uh, images here and I can select say uh, image of Melbourne where I live and drag it in and I could also overlay or lumosity the uh, that layer and then that way we get that sort of edgy sort of countdown on top of the city and I can hit S for scale and change the scaling so I'll put a keyframe for my image at the start I'll go all the way to the end and I can scale that down I can hold shift so that it doesn't distort the proportions and there if I drag through you can see it slowly shrinks as the countdown goes which is really cool now if I grab my two white layers down the bottom here I'm going to select the parent pick whip which is this thing here and drag it to the text layer and then I can also scale the text layer so it might start smaller and go bigger and so you have this counterintuitive sort of one scaling up while the other scaling down, which is pretty cool. But what if I want to have this pi radial thing count each second rather than just the um, the total time that's passed? Well, we can do that as well. So we're going to hit E, and that'll get rid of all the options down here except for the radial wipe effect. And instead of it being finished at the very end, I'm going to go until my playhead is at 24 seconds. You'll see I've chosen 24 because my frame rate's at 25. So if I hold control and tap to the right, you'll see I go to one second. So if I hold control and go to the left, I'm going one frame before that, which is 24. So now that I've done that, I want to drag my transition completion keyframe all the way to that point and you will know that you've dragged it onto that exact frame when this little icon here lights up yellow it means that there is a keyframe currently at that time so now that I've done that I want to go forward to one second 
and I want to set this back to 100 so it starts all over again. Now we could go through and try to copy and paste all this, but we're going to actually use an expression. And it's really easy because we don't need to type anything, we just need to select it from the menu. So if we go down here, we're going to hold Alt and click on that same stopwatch. And then here, we're going to go to our little right little arrow just next to the pick whip and all these options. You'll see it has this thing selected. We want to keep that selected. So we're going to click this little arrow. We're going to go to property when we're going to go to loop out duration. So it's going to paste that little expression in there. And then we click, click out of it. We zoom out. You'll see now as we drag forward, it fills in and does it. And we can check how that goes. If we go all the way to the end, we can get to our frame 58 24 so that's one frame before it hits 59 and we should see it change over as well as the number so you can check it right at the end make sure that it's actually doing it all correctly and now it is so we can preview that by hitting numpad zero or by hitting spacebar whichever way you want to go and we'll see that there and there you have it it's counting down it's counting the seconds everything's scaling and it's getting that cool movement. And you could fade this out at the end, you could put this lower in the corner or wherever you want to put it, you could put text by it. And the fortunate thing is you can add things for specific amounts of time. So that's how you create this simple countdown timer for whatever you heart desires to use or to count down for. Until next time, my name is Bench and thanks for watching.